A lot of parents have been asking me, are commercial baby foods safe? Over the past several years, multiple organizations have tested different brands of baby and toddler foods and found concerning levels of lead, arsenic, cadmium, and mercury in many of them. Several months ago, the U.S. House Committee on Oversight and Reform released a report confirming the same. The purpose of this video is to inform and educate you on this situation, and more importantly, to make you aware of four immediate changes you can make starting today that will decrease your child's exposure to these toxins. If this is our first time meeting, I'm Dr. Belusov. I'm a board-certified pediatrician, and I equip parents with knowledge so they can care for their children with confidence. So let's start off by answering, where are these heavy metals coming from and how are they ending up in baby and toddler foods? Lead, arsenic, cadmium, and mercury are heavy metals that are naturally occurring elements in rock and soil. But they are also found in higher levels in soil and water that has been contaminated through either farming and manufacturing practices or pollution. Arsenic widely contaminates food and drinking water because it has been used as a pesticide for a long time and released into the environment through mining and other industrial operations. The inorganic form of arsenic is considered to be more toxic. Lead has been restricted in children's toys and phased out of gasoline, pesticides, paint, and food contact surfaces over the past 40 years. But lead that lingers in homes, food processing equipment, soil, and water remains a problem. Cadmium is a heavy metal that has many industrial uses and remains a common contaminant in food and the environment. Mercury is a global pollutant released from coal-burning power plants, mining operations, and other sources. Seafood is the main source of mercury exposure for children and adults. Just as plants absorb nutrients, they also absorb heavy metals from soil and water. However, some plants take up more of the toxins than others. For example, root crops like carrots and sweet potatoes absorb more of these heavy metals than most other types of fruits and vegetables and rice absorbs about 10 times more inorganic arsenic than do other grains. For packaged foods, it's also possible that something in the manufacturing process can contribute to the contamination. I also want to mention foods that are certified organic. Although they do have benefits, including lower pesticide levels and less impact on the environment, however, multiple independent studies have shown that organic baby foods are just as likely to contain these heavy metals as the non-organic baby foods. Since most of our soil is contaminated with these heavy metals and the toxins can get into prepared organic foods from processing, that's why they tend to contain similar levels. So how do these heavy metals affect the health of babies and toddlers? Research continues to confirm concerning risks for young children exposed to the four heavy metals. Multiple studies show a decrease in IQ, an increase in attention deficits, and an increase in other learning and behavioral problems in children who are exposed through food and other sources. Also three of the metals, arsenic, lead, and cadmium, are known to be potent human carcinogens, which means that they are substances that can potentially cause cancers. Of course, there are many variables, genetics, type of exposure, and the overall quality of a child's diet that affect how children will respond to heavy metals in their environment or diet. The risks for these heavy metals grow over time because they accumulate. So the great news is that there are things you can do moving forward to decrease your child's exposure to these toxins and reduce the chance of negative outcomes in the future. I want to spend the remainder of this video focusing on the changes you can make starting today that will decrease your child's exposure to the heavy metals in their food. So the first thing to do, and the one that will decrease your child's exposure to heavy metals the most, is to avoid giving your baby or toddler commercial foods made from rice. In multiple studies that tested baby foods, rice-based foods, namely infant rice cereal and rice-based snacks, were found not only to be high in inorganic arsenic, the most toxic form of arsenic, but also were often contaminated with all four heavy metals. Infant rice cereal is the top source of inorganic arsenic in a child's diet. And a study that was done by the organization Healthy Babies Bright Futures found that non-rice and multigrain varieties of infant cereals, including oatmeal, barley, quinoa, and others, 
contain on average 84% less inorganic arsenic than leading brands of infant rice cereal. Knowing what we know now, I encourage parents to skip infant rice cereal altogether and go with the other grain options. Other commercial baby foods to avoid include teething biscuits and rice rusks, as they often contain inorganic arsenic, lead, and cadmium. They also don't have much nutritional value. Baby snacks that are made with rice flour, including baby puffs, contain arsenic, lead, and cadmium at relatively high levels compared to other baby foods. By choosing packaged snacks that are rice-free, parents can reduce their child's exposure to these heavy metals on average by 93%. Multigrain snacks, which also include rice, have lower levels than snacks that are made of rice grain only. Even better options for snacks include offering fruits or giving yogurt to the child and limiting the number of packaged processed foods in their diets all together. If you're finding this information helpful, hit the thumbs up button below. The second thing you can do is offer a wide variety of foods throughout the week. Since rice absorbs about 10 times more inorganic arsenic from the soil than other grain crops, it's the top source of this toxin in our diets. By changing up which whole grains are served throughout the week, you will decrease your family's exposure. Better options include oats, buckwheat, farro, quinoa, millet, and barley. I know that rice is a staple food for many. You will be able to decrease the level of inorganic arsenic by soaking the raw rice and then thoroughly rinsing it before cooking. Also, cooking rice in extra water that is then poured off before serving the food can cut the arsenic levels as well. White rice has been found to have less arsenic than brown rice. Carrots and sweet potatoes are a great source of vitamin A and other nutrients your child needs, but they tend to absorb more of the heavy metals from soil than other fruits and vegetables, especially lead and cadmium. It's fine for you to offer these foods in your child's diet, but I wouldn't offer them every day. It's best to offer a variety of fruits, vegetables, and grains throughout the week in your family meals. The third thing you can do is avoid giving fruit juices. Some of the more common fruit juices that children tend to drink, including apple, pear, and grape juices, were found to contain traces of lead and arsenic. The levels of these heavy metals aren't as high as in some of the foods. However, some toddlers drink juice often, so it can become a top source of exposure to these toxins. Water is a much better drink for babies and toddlers. Of course, in babies, we don't start water until around six months, and we don't recommend giving large amounts of it under 12 months, since they're also taking breast milk or formula and their kidneys are still developing. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that children under one year of age not have any fruit juices, and children under three should have no more than half a cup in a day. And if fruit juice is given, it should be offered as part of a meal not diluted with water and taken over time because it increases the child's risk for tooth decay. It's much healthier for your child to eat sliced or pureed fruits than to have them in the version of fruit juices. Your child will also get to benefit from the fiber and other nutrients that are present in the fruit. The fourth thing to do is offer your child homemade foods primarily. The benefits of making homemade foods is that it allows you to have control over all the ingredients that go into the food. Opposed to potentially exposing your child to preservatives and potential contaminants from processing or packaging. It also allows you to introduce your baby to the unique foods and flavors frequently eaten by your family. Not to mention that it's more cost effective. But remember, offering a variety of foods is just as important when making your own foods, since some foods, as I mentioned, absorb higher levels of heavy metals from soil and water. I don't want you to be alarmed or frightened by this information. I hope that from what I discussed in this video, you have a better understanding of what you can do on your part to decrease your household's exposure to lead, arsenic, cadmium, and mercury in food. There's no question about it, the farming and food processing practices need to be improved, and better safety standards need to be established. Fortunately, there are organizations like Healthy Babies Bright Futures and others that are advocating for this. And also, the FDA is looking into implementing better monitoring and regulation of the baby food industry. If you would like to see the different reports that tested baby foods and their results, I do have several of them linked in the description below. In the comments section, let me know your takeaways from this video. See you in the next one.